Hello YouTube! I am Pinstar and this is a Offworld Trading Company Early Access Strategy and Tactics Post-Game Analysis. How's that for a string of titles? So this is a follow-up to the, the uh, breakneck game that uh, I had in my video in the day previous. If you haven't seen that video, I would highly recommend watching it first before watching this analysis. A link to it is in the description. So, um, yeah, I've been doing some analysis of this video and um, quite a few uh, interesting things here. Now, if you remember correctly, I uh, went with my opener of Steel Steel Power as my initial three uh, plots. And I don't necessarily um, regret going that. Now, um, but let's take a look at, at the game itself and see where I went right and see where I might have gone wrong and what I might have done differently. Um, in uh, in this game to help me out. So looking here at the resources here, unfortunately my Steel Steel power play did not really pay off as much as I would like it to have. Uh, granted it may have uh, contributed to it partially, but uh, yeah, their uh, power was pretty uh, meh throughout the entire game, except for this one little peak. Well, it's not exactly a little peak, but this one peak where I guess somebody turned off the power or there was enough uh, uh, consecutive uh, nukes on uh, on people's power supplies that the uh, there, there was an energy shortage. Ironically, though, I don't remember there being an actual energy shortage event that was uh, kicked off either by hacker array or by random chance. Um, but I do also remember a lot of people, myself included, kind of panicked at that, threw down some solar panels. That didn't... Uh, power quickly crashed back then again. And as you can see here, uh, here's the day, night, day, night, little peaks and valleys of it um, as solar gets turned on and off. Um, so that one early geothermal did not pay off as well as I would have liked it to. Uh, but you know what? I still don't regret necessarily going that. Now, uh, let's take a quick look at water here. Um, now, as um, I'm looking through the footage again, um, this water shortage right here was kind of engineered. Um, part of uh, Mr. Research, who was the ultimate winner of the game, uh, he had a lot invested into water. Um, and he uh, he was pretty aggressive about... Um, actually, no, no, that was Mr. Uh, that was Mr. Uh, Espionage, who was the one who was pushing water, uh, but who was ultimately bought out by uh, Mr. Research. I think Mr. Espionage's downfall was that he uh, spent too much money on, uh, well, Espionage, uh, true to his name. Uh, but water, I don't think, was a linchpin of this. Uh, food, food, yeah, food's been rising up there until everyone switched over to food, in which case it crashed. Uh, and then people switched away from food, and it went right back up again, uh, especially as people grew. Um, so, uh, yeah, one thing to be worry, wary of, and this is a thing, is when the price is spiking really high, and you might be saying, ooh, that's looking lucrative, I should get in on that. Guess what? A bunch of other people are probably thinking the same thing. And if everyone does it, then the market crashes. Uh, and then everyone has to retool. Um, all right. Oxygen. Same deal with uh, with water here. We had a mid-game shortage here. Um, kind of an interesting pivot. Um, someone must have been retooling a bunch of their, uh, of their assets in order to... Uh, uh, go away from the the uh, basic utilities here and uh, going into some of, some of the others. Um, now fuel, fuel. Uh, this was another area that kind of hurt me because my strategy tends to be pretty heavy on fuel, and um, I guess there was a, there's quite a few uh, people sh not shipping a whole lot uh, around the map. Um, not to mention this this was a random fuel surplus that got triggered by the game itself that just really put fuel in the toilet. Um, this natural growth of fuel would have been tacked onto here and just probably sent it up here to the 80s or so. Um, but uh, yeah, I wasn't able to really capitalize on my fuel that much. So unfortunately, that was another wasted opportunity. Now, as I predicted earlier in the game, aluminum stayed in the toilet for, well, pretty much most of the game. Yeah, there was little spikes as people upgraded their colonies, 
um, and had to force buy the aluminum, which caused the price to shoot up. But as soon as that happened, somebody with a huge surplus of aluminum said, hey, the price is on aluminum's up. I should sell and right back down to five bucks or so. Um, so yeah, I, I, my, my not taking any aluminum mines in this game was, was absolutely the right choice. Um, I didn't do anything with iron, so I'm not going to pay attention to it. Steel, on the other hand, um, now steel usually is a good performer, and I went triple steel ultimately. I started double steel, I went triple steel, um, ultimately, but, oh, the, I think the AIs got privy to that, because they started surplusing it. Like, they, Mr. Espionage just kept on steel surplusing after steel surplusing after steel surplusing. I mean, look how low steel got at one point. That was just from constant surpluses. Of course, that got bought right back, right up uh, from people wanting to cash in on that, and so this price shot back up. But just being hit with constant surpluses, uh, it wasn't until the very late game that steel became uh, profitable in of itself, and even then, that wasn't that was a little bit too little, too late at that point. Not um, carbon, carbon. Uh, that's a lovely choice for for carbon. Carbon. St steady growth. Interesting that carbon remained a fairly valuable resource in the complete absence of any um, any scavenger colonies, um, at least until uh, mid to late game, in which case it went, I think somebody built a uh, carbon mine and <laughs> the market just couldn't absorb what it was putting out. Now chemicals, here is another place where I got burned real bad, because I went early chemicals, and um, yeah, this was a naturally triggered uh, surplus of chemicals, uh, followed by, I think, another naturally triggered surplus of chemicals. Uh, I don't think anyone was hacker arraying those, but yeah, they just went in the toilet, and I just could not capitalize on the fact that I went early chemicals. Yeah, I was using them real cheap for my research, but guess what? Mr. Research was doing that as well. He um, he didn't even have a chemicals factory, and he was just researching up a storm at his uh, at his engineering bay, um, and he was just buying them off the market, and it, he was paying pennies for them. It wasn't until the very very late game when people started uh, doing mass quantities of research that um, chemicals actually recovered. But again, too little, too late for me to really capitalize on that. Uh, silicon was interesting. Now, if you remember, let's, let's, uh, put that, uh, power, uh, power supply in here. So look at that. As, as power climb, people start buying solar panels in a panic. That sends the price of silicon up because solar panels are primarily composed of silicon. Once all the solar panels are in place, nobody wants the silicon anymore. It goes back down. And once all the solar panels are in place, you know, all that extra energy production, energy goes in, or power goes back into the toilet as well. So interesting little correlation between these two things. You can tell exactly what happened here. You know, energy panic, solar panels, double crash. Um, so interesting little, uh, little, little story to be told by the data there. Now glass, this was yet another industry of mine that I got burned on because I eventually went triple glass. Uh, um, when I was single glass, I was doing pretty well up here, but then, um, I think a few other people went uh, heavy into glass and it just collapsed. And it wasn't again till the end game when people started doing mass upgrades um, and mass purchases of, uh, of their um, off-world uh, markets that glass started getting bought up automatically from, from people building it. Um, and even then, like even when the price shot up, um, a lot of it was, was me just, you know, I saw, I saw the high price of the glass and I was sitting, especially late game, I was sitting on hundreds of units of glass. So I would just quickly just knock it right back down and profit off of it. Um, so glass uh, remained kind of low and I kind of overproduced it. So that was kind of me digging my own grave here. Uh, and then lastly, electronics. And this was an interesting beast. Electronics, I, I should have gone in early electronics. 
because uh, it wasn't until at least the very late game that electronics finally had their their correction when everybody started going into electronics and even then um, it didn't uh, completely bottom out because people uh, building all the off-world markets that requires 100 electronics a pop um, and those tend to um, to shoot the price up a little at least a little bit but people were saturating the markets as much as possible not to mention we had a robotic um, 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 colony in place uh, now this right here, this was a naturally triggered robot um, electronic surplus, uh, and then I think there was a naturally triggered um, shortage as well. Uh, either that or this was the shortage. One of those two was the shortage. But yeah, it was definitely uh, an interesting game for uh, the, uh, the robotics player. Um, so let's uh, let's take a look at the resources here. So my resources here. Um, so power, the power game, I kind of came out even on, uh, yeah, I had to auto buy some and, uh, and, and this was like just a short period of time when power went nuts that I had to do some, uh, some buying of it, but I also sold it, but it wasn't that high. So I kind of netted zero on power. So power was not my downfall despite producing so much of it because it was just so freaking cheap for most of the game. Uh, water, I auto-bought most of it, um, but again, I never went into water. Um, now, this did became, this become, yeah, this became a big pain point. This and food, I mean, look at food. I spent over $100,000 just on freaking food. Um, I'm going to need to rethink my no water, no food thing. I can probably still get away with the no water thing, but... Going, uh, going double, uh, going double um, electrolysis reactor here really, really hurt me um, because I mean I was just not making that off of the food. I should have been making food because look at look what I made off of oxygen and fuel. I mean, heck, I bought more fuel than I used uh, just because the markets weren't uh, weren't playing nice with uh, with me. And the times when it was down in the toilet was the time when I was ready to sell. And then when I didn't have enough of it because I was using it all for chemicals, which, by the way, never really panned out. I mean, yeah, I made a decent amount of money here on the chemicals, but uh, that early that early and mid game chemicals were still in the toilet, and I just couldn't capitalize on them and and uh, get my transition flowing. Um, steel, I made a feel a fair amount on, but again, steel should be a bit more, especially for someone who went triple steel. Um, silicon, uh, whatever. Uh, glass, get glass. Another thing, you should be making more than than uh, just this um, and I did capitalize on glass quite a bit um, but unfortunately it just bottomed out now again it bottomed out probably because of my own fault uh, from doing that and then electronics electronics is where I actually that was my workhorse right there was was me sending stuff off um, uh, for electronics now uh, off world I was kind of all over the place in terms of what I was sending up and eventually I just started sending up my glass that was my uh, that was my uh, most efficient thing here. Now the problem is, you know, this was this is still a pretty decently strong game. The problem comes is if you look at Mr. Research. Mr. Research launched um now food was the most surplus I'm sorry. Uh, food was the most uh, uh, valuable of all the off world shipments. So Mr. Uh, Mr. Research here, who was making food like crazy, um, uh, made eight hundred and five thousand dollars by selling it off world. You compare that to me off of all the stuff I made off world, two hundred and fifty um, from that. He just kept on steamrolling and steamrolling. I mean, even with the nerfs to uh, the prices of off world goods, he he was first to off world and he just hit it really hard. Um, just, I mean, look how many launches he got. Look at him, 22 launches. That's insane. Uh, so he just kind of muscled me. Uh, he just muscled uh, the, the cash in and uh, just bought me out just by spamming off-world markets. Um, cause you look at his, at his, uh, at his, uh, uh, goods here. Interesting looking at this. He, he was first to the, um, uh, to the to the uh, energy collector thing, the the thing where you can stockpile up to two hundred units of energy, and interestingly enough, he um, you know he he came out on top of uh, of the power game here by a decent margin. Um, anything else? Let's see. Um, 
purchased um no he didn't uh, i mean he got stung by water a little bit but uh everything else he was able to dodge quite a bit now looking at his normal exports here food food is where he made his where he made his money i mean look at that almost three hundred thousand dollars on food because he capitalized on the price there he was in the right market he also was heavy in the water he was in the right market there too um, so he actually kind of just avoided the, the, you know, stuff here. I mean, heck, he bought more steel than he sold. Um, so he was just more into the organics thing. And it just happened that the organics, uh, went, uh, went pretty darn high. Now, looking at the buildings, what did everyone have? Um, let's see. Uh, well, I'm not going to analyze that too much. Uh, shortages and surpluses. Look at this thing. Okay, so um, in terms of using the hacker array, he sh yeah he shortaged food and water, so he uh, took those already high prices, made them higher. But he wasn't the most active with that. Mister Espionage was the one who was really screwing with the market. Two steel surpluses, um, an electronic surplus, and a power surplus plus a water shortage. These two steel surpluses really put the screws to me um, because I was kind of depending on steel to be kind of my main source of income. Uh, I don't think Mr. Long, yeah, Mr. Long didn't screw at the market. What did I do? Um, I, why the heck did I surplus fuel? Oh, because I was sucking up more with it with the chemicals or whatnot. But I shortaged um, steel and chemicals and electronics in an attempt to bump them up uh, in prices. But yeah, those, uh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Espionage really, uh, really screwed with me here. Yeah, all I did on the black market was buy a pair of goon squads for the cheap. Uh, Mr. Espionage, look at this guy. I think he dug himself a grave by spending so much money on the black market here. I mean, he might as he may as well have been a scavenger colony for how active he used the freaking black market. Um, Mr. Oh my God, Mr. Research, Mr. Research actually spent more. Who would have thought? But it, look at uh, look at his purchases here. It was all on these goon squads, including a really, really late game goon squad, plus a really, really late game new claim. In terms of like mid and early game stuff, he just picked up some of the real El Cheapos. I mean, he got some of the uh, some of the, to the things, but he got them on the cheap. So he didn't uh, until he, I mean until he was like absolutely ridiculously flush with cash in the late game. Um, he really spent uh, quite conservatively there. And Mr. Launch. Um, I think Mr. Launch was pretty aggressive with the freaking mutinies. Jeez. Um, so interesting there. Uh, now, technology, I think, is where Mr. Research excelled. Yeah, look at that. Four water production, four food production, two oxygen production. So he just went all organics. That was his thing. And four glass production. Um, yeah, he just went crazy with that. Um now, I did what I, I myself went a little crazy with it myself, but I was kind of dancing all over the place and I was not in water and food. So in this case, um, it was it was the the uh, organics, um, the things that are traditionally quite low in the game was the one uh, was the thing that ultimately dug my grave because I was too, too heavily invested in uh, in that. And then patents did, what did Mr. Research? He got the superconductor, which never really did anything for him. Uh, he got the water engine, but because he was so heavily involved with water, that actually worked out for him. Um, and got cold fusion, again, invested in water. So um, he actually got the logical stuff. Now, granted, uh, <laughs> water was more expensive than fuel, so it was technically a bad deal for him to pick that up. But at the very least, he didn't have to power his buildings with electricity, so everything was just pure profit to him at that point. Um, so yeah, Mr. Research was uh, was the leader of this game, uh, hands down. Uh, an expansive colony, um, and I think he was one of the last ones to found, so he got even more claims than usual. He just happened to make good use of them. Um, so I hope this post-op analysis helps uh, helps you understand what went on with this game and um, perhaps what I could have done better to um, make myself uh, successful.
So in our next video, we're, uh, I'm going to uh, change things up a little bit. Uh, still sticking with our scientific colony, but I have an idea in mind in terms of uh, hedging our bets and protecting us from uh, some of these fluctuations in, uh, in the prices and uh, also diversifying ourselves. So if you like this video and you want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave me a comment, good, bad, or indifferent. Your feedback is always welcome. Uh, so until next time, this has been Pinstar, signing out. See ya.